My name is Nancy Hernandez, and joining me today is Matt Geiger. Thank you, Matt, for being with us today and sharing your memories. Not a problem. Thank you so much for having me. Now, I wanted to tell you, ask you a little bit about your experience organizing the political forum, because for a young person, you did something really amazing and put together the forum of our town candidates for the recent election. Can you talk a little bit about what got you involved and how you organized that? Sure. So. At the, um, the start of the election during the nominating period, I had created a uh, Facebook group called the Mount Airy Election Forum in hopes that I could have candidates and citizens ask questions and interact with one another. After I had created that, I had heard that there wasn't going to be a, a regularly scheduled forum as the CMC usually puts on. So what I decided to do was just organize one myself. And um, I, I had gotten in contact with all the candidates and I hoped to like kind of create this new format and um, not only just create a new format, but to also broadcast it in a much different way. Typically, the, um, the, the usual forums are broadcasted on Channel 19 and sometimes I think 23. And then they're also put onto the CMC's website. What I wanted to do was hopefully do a live stream to Facebook and not have a live audience. So it would decrease the amount of, because I, I, I only had like a week until election, the election, so I, I decided to make this, this as easy and as streamlined as possible to just have no live audience except for on Facebook, where the audience members that are on Facebook could ask questions. So it was this new age kind of style that I was putting together, and I incorporated um, what I had learned because I had participated in previous programs for the American Legion about politics and civics. So I had incorporated what I had learned from the American Legion as well as just watching previous election debates and forums and kind of made this hybrid composite style of, of uh, debate, if you will. That's ex excellent. It was very ambitious and you did a fabulous job. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. So how did you get interested in politics here at Mount Airy? Well, I, uh, I started um, with my interest in 2017 during the first um, or not the around during the first, but during the uh, mayoral slash town council election. Before then, there was um, a huge issue, if you remember, back with um, like the ATF, and there was someone that was trying to sell firearms out of their home. I had taken an interest in that issue, and I had I'd gone to town council meetings and listened and spoke, um, and just kind of uh, my my interest in the town politics after that increased significantly because I had been involved in previous um, town hall meetings and whatnot, and kind of learned the process. So I got involved with a, with a candidate and kind of rode along with him and got to experience the campaign and, and how it worked. I got to interact with citizens and go to the, um, I didn't get to vote obviously, but I got to go to the, to the, to the poll and to the polls and to talk with voters. And it was just a phenomenal experience to kind of have an, an interest and get involved in town politics. And from there, um, I watched from the sidelines, I watched the forum throughout the special election earlier in 2018. And then with this election, I decided to take a much more neutral and nonpartisan stance and to hopefully increase voter turnout because I've been involved with the past two election cycles and I wanted to see if I could give back to the community before I went off to college. That's great. That's Thank you. excellent. So what were your, um, what's your perspective or what insight can you offer us into what small town local politics are like? What observations did sure. you? Sure. Um, I can only test to Mount Airy, but what I can tell you is that I think that people always, always, always underestimate town politics. Um, I'm someone that has been involved in politics just in general since seventh or eighth grade, um, but my interests began at a national level, studying the different candidates for president because I, I started taking interest during the 2016 presidential election, an interest in the Senate candidates, interest in the gubernatorial candidates, but I never, ever had thought that I would be involved at the local level. But what I had learned is that the town council members, the mayor, and, and everybody that works in town hall has a much more significant impact on your daily life than someone that is in the White House or in Annapolis. So I, I would like to tell everybody that like what happens in town hall is not just the issue of five council members and the mayor, it's the issue of all 10,000 residents of this town. Um, and that if you go to town hall meetings, you'll learn much more than you think about what's going on in our town. And there are our, our town runs extremely well. We, I'm, I'm lucky to say that we have a very functional town. There are, there are a lot of municipalities that are a lot more dysfunctional than Mount Airy. Um, so Mount Airy is well run, but with, with, every, with every town and with every, with, with every political system, there are its issues. And if, and if um, citizens are active, they can, they can have a much greater impact than the, even the, the council members themselves. So people don't think they can make much of an impact in their daily lives, but if you get involved at the local level, just speaking at town hall meetings, getting to know your, your council members and your mayor, you'll have a very, very um, far-reaching impact in the town and in your life. That's great. I agree. The Thank more you. people that are involved locally, the better our communities exist for now and in the future. Well, tell us a little bit about, as a youth here in town, what are some of the things that you all do for fun? <laughs> what, 
what do you feel is lacking? What what changes have you seen in the years that you've lived here? I think you said you moved here when you were. I was. 13? I was. No, I moved here in 2006. So okay. So I've been here for the past 13 years, since I was um, about five years old. Okay. So tell about growing up in Mount Airy and what mm -hmm. changes that you've seen in your lifetime. Well, back in my day, <laughs> uh, beginning way back when in 2006, um, the town was a lot different. I don't obviously have too many cognizant memories of town politics at that time. I wasn't right. running for office <laughs> in 2006. I mean, as a child. Yeah, no, I know. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just kidding <laughs> with you. Um, throughout, throughout my experience growing up in Mount Airy, there is, um, there is like... There, there was a there was a meme on like Twitter or something that had that was like what people in small towns do for fun and it's just like drive around, drive around, drive around, drive around. Um, obviously, our budget is is limited because we only have we have such a small tax base. So I don't expect there to be massive community centers and recreation centers and these massive complexes for youth, which is perfectly okay. So a lot of my a lot of my youth has been spent just kind of exploring the nature and wilderness around town and in town too. Um, I think Mount Airy, I think this is the thing that a lot of people miss with the youth. The, I, 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 whether it's a council member or a mayor or, or someone that's politically active in the town, they usually, the, the default is that in order to get the youth in a, in a safe and recreational environment, you have to create a center for such. Um, and I'm glad that rail trails exist because I think it's super important, but I think it's even more important for the youth than it is for just a, a normal adult. Creating and cultivating the nature in this town would allow for, for all of the youth to have a much more productive and, quite frankly, just more enjoyable time growing up. I was in the woods all the time, looking around, exploring, going in the, the creeks and the rivers, and this town is beautiful, um, and the area around it is absolutely magnificent. Uh, the rolling hills and, and the farms and the streams and everything, I think that kids take up and, and they look through those and they, and they explore and they learn a lot about themselves and their friends and the, and the nature around them. So it doesn't need to be a basketball court. It doesn't need to be a football field. It can just be a trail through the forest. And I think a lot of kids would appreciate that significantly. Now you grow up in Nottingham. Yes. So there were a lot of woods around your community mm -hmm. on the side and that's where the creeks and streams yes. were too? Okay, I didn't realize that either. That's yeah. interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, and tell a little bit about school experiences, like the schools that you've yeah. attended and, and what those were like. Sure, so um, the, the most interesting thing I, I like to say is that if you are in Parge Ridge, because I started in Parge Ridge obviously in kindergarten, and I, I went through K through two, and then a weird kind of shock is when you go into modern elementary school, because the schools are, are, they're not run differently, but they're different buildings by far. I'd always have a stuffy nose when I was ever, I was, whenever I was, out, I was at Mount Elementary because I, I guess there was just an old building, so it got the dust and everything. But I, I, I really enjoyed um, the school, the schools here in um, Mount Airy, the middle school, the elementary school, Parge Ridge. I think they're well run. Um, it's nice because like, they're not ever gets, not everybody gets to experience this. You don't you, when people in like a big city or a or a big town they go to school and there's like 14 different elementary schools and 15 different middle schools. It was just nice because I would I would go on a two minute bus ride to Parge Ridge or Mount Elementary or the middle school and I come home I get off the bus and all my friends are right there. No one is is too far away. Everybody's a five minute drive away or a two minute walk away. And it's nice because I just I, it just this community becomes so much stronger when its youth are always surrounded with one another. There's 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 no great divide between rich and poor. And you if if you live in Summer Ridge, you're no different than someone in Nottingham. Or if you live on Main Street, you're no different than someone that lives in, in Twin Arch. Everybody is connected in some way, shape, or form. The only divide, however, I would say, is the Frederick County line. And it does make it kind of difficult because if you're going to school um, at, like, I think it's Twin Arch Elementary or Middle, and you're going Twin to... Twin Ridge. Twin Ridge, sorry. And um, Linganore... There is a little bit of a divide there because it's kind of hard to get to know someone when you don't have social media at such a young age and everything like that. But other than that, um, going to school uh, was great because I was surrounded by my friends the entire time and I'd see them at night, in the mornings, during the school day. Everybody's connected in one way, shape, or form throughout the entire day. Yeah. That is what you point out about the, the line. My daughter had a friend that lived on the Carroll County side Mm. and went to school with her and then she moved across the street and ended up going to <laughs> Linganore. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I've had more friends in the Carroll County side than the Frederick County one. Now, you were probably in the last class that um, started school at Mount Airy, the old Mount Airy Middle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So tell a little bit about the difference of going to that school oh. and going to the new Mount Airy Middle. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, so I, you're right. I was the last. I was the last sixth grader uh, group to go and be in those portables that were outside the old middle school, 
and that was that was an experience. Um, if I ever write a book about my life, that's going to be like a whole chapter. Is like the Mount Airy Middle School portables. Um, we had several ish incidences, and I'm glad there's a new school. Um, I'll never forget walking from my like normal academic classes, your math, your English, your social studies, your science, to like my electives, which were like your music, your band, stuff like that. Walking in pouring down rain in a blizzard in a tornado you're walking from your portables to your to your middle school and it's like a, it's like not that long of a walk it's like a two minute walk but it's just like if it's raining you're gonna you're you're running you're running as fast as you can um and then there was one time where this is this is actually where it pays off there was one time where like the power went out um completely you might actually remember this um and because the middle school itself, like the, the, the physical building, wasn't, was so old, it didn't have a, a powerful enough generator to generate electricity throughout the whole building, so just the emergency lights were on. So basically, Mount Airy Middle School was dark. It was, like, it was so dark. And then our portables were just okay because we had generators because they were new. So that was the one time I was really, really happy that I was in the portables. Another incident, which is a little grosser, is that someone had like backed up the, the sewage system and the, yeah, so the whole portable smelled for like a week. And so that was, that was not as fun. It's very difficult to take a test when you, when you have to hold your nose the entire time. But um, overall, it's, and it's just nice. I don't know, I, I, so many people complained about it and I'm sure like looking back, it's definitely like a nice nostalgic factor because you know, sometimes going through those just crazy and wild and wet experiences um it, it just it makes you a stronger person but it, it, it just it makes you happy because like you're not you're not coddled you're not like held super t tightly it just you're you're you get to live life and, it, and it's just fun because we're kids and it doesn't really bother us too much it makes good stories yes it does For, it makes great <laughs> conversation later down the road so then how was it different going to the new one the new middle school yeah the new middle school is beautiful. Um, I I remember going to meetings with my dad um, when they were like planning it out and stuff like that, and listening about how the new middle school was going to be created. And I took pictures um, of when right 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 before the middle, new middle school opened. I took pictures of the new middle school, and we like turned around to our like left, and there was the all the rubble, and we took pictures of that. I still have it somewhere um, in my in my computer. But the new middle school was was great because it was like everything that we didn't have, we now had like a functional uh, basketball court that didn't creak every single time that you walked on it. Or you didn't have to walk up like a fire escape to get to the basketball court. That was great. Um, it, was, it was nice. It was nice. I, I really enjoyed it. It was obviously a little different because it felt like really new and we felt like really special because we had this new school. And it, and it was interesting because a lot of the teachers had like never seen some of this equipment before. So we were trying to like break it in. So there were times where like the, the safety shower and the science room would go off and everybody would get drenched. Or, or we wouldn't know how to turn the lights on and off because there were sensor lights. And we had, cause we had teachers that had been in the middle school for like 40 years. And they were like, I don't know how to use these lights. And they're like hitting the button and the lights are going on and off. So that was also fun because no one had any idea what we were doing. And I'm sure that now it's obviously a little more like, you know, standard, pr standard protocol and procedure is going just fine. But it was nice to be a part of a group of people that I could break in that new school. I could kind of like, you know, loosen it up. It's like a new baseball glove. You can kind of break it in so it's nice and easy to use. Yeah, and you're amongst the rare few that went to both. Yeah, <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad I was able to do both. Now, after you graduated from the middle school, then you have to make the trek yes. to South Carroll. So tell a little bit about what the roads are like when you're Trying well, to get well, from Mount Airy to your... <laughs> we got to start with the, with the airport. So first I get on the plane and I fly across the county to, to South Carroll. <laughs> that, that's really interesting. Um, I, I, you know, it's weird because I had friends who went to Mount Airy Middle School and they would complain about the long drive they have from Winfield. And I was like, you guys have it easy. No, it's no big deal. I can't be that bad. First day of school, I'm driving like three hours to South Carroll High School. Um, it, it, it's, 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 it's really, it's, it was, it was... It was a different experience because my entire life up to that point, that was no more than like a five, ten minute bus ride away from, from my school. Um, and if I really wanted to, I probably could like walk and take an hour to get to school. Uh, but at South Carroll, I mean, you're getting up at um, like 545, you take the bus at 640 and you're at school at 710 and you're sitting there for another 20 minutes waiting for classes to start. So it definitely was a drag, at least in the, in the, in the bus department for the first couple of... Uh, First couple of years, we had a really good bus driver, though, Mr. Tom. He'd always play country music, and we'd always talk to him. Super nice guy. I love him. I hope he's still there. Um, when you start driving, though, the experience does get a little bit better when you're driving to school because then you can, like, get up. And sometimes, I'm, I'm guilty of this, too. I'm sure all my senior friends out there are guilty of this as well. Um, getting up too late and coming to school just as the bell's ringing and running through the hallways trying to get to class on time, I'm guilty of that for sure. South Carroll is interesting because um, it's the first time where you're not going to school with everybody that lives in your neighborhood 
um, and that's it, you know? Mm -hmm. It's the first time where you have people from New Windsor and Winfield. I mean, Winfield is a part of Mount Airy Middle, but it still doesn't feel as, as far away as it does when you're in South Carroll. But South Carroll is fantastic because it was the first place where I felt like I, I went through, I was very outspoken at South Carroll, just like I'm really involved in town politics here. You can say I was involved in South Carroll politics, if you will. So I was really involved with the administration and, and helping to get things done and, and, and helping improve my school. And South Carroll was a very interesting outlet for all of that. Um, I, I, I had a really, uh, I, I would say at times it was very frustrating, but at the end of the day, it was a really rewarding and fulfilling experience to be at South Carroll because it's just a unique experience. A lot of kids, because I, I run a company that has kids from all over the world, and a lot of kids are only a 10-minute bus ride away from their high school like they are with their middle school or elementary school. But being so far away from that, from that school and having such a large variety of people that go there it makes it really interesting because you you like you get like a little sub demographic of Carroll County with all the different people from all these different backgrounds, and it's nice. Great, good answer. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about your business. My business, okay. Yeah. Oh God, uh, self uh, self promotion here. So I run a news and media company called Seventy One Republic. I'm the co-founder of Such. I founded it two years ago. It'll turn two on June 10th. Um, the company specializes in, like I said, news and media. We cover national politics, global politics. Sometimes we do more local events, like I did a story about um, last year during the walkouts at my high school, I covered a story there. Um, but for the most part, I mean, there, there are kids from Austin, Texas. There are kids from Green Bay, Wisconsin. There are kids from um, Warsaw, Poland, from, from Sao Paulo, Brazil. It's just a global entity. We have cover four continents, um, I think seven countries, and like 20 U.S. states. So we have a, that, and that's interesting too. But the thing about that, and I want to just relate this back to South Carolina for just a second. I talk to kids that go to school in Poland and in Brazil and in Texas, and it's like you, you would think that the that it's it's like a it's like a weird culture shock and experience to talk to those kids. But at the same time, it's kind of like when I go to South Carol because South Carol is there. There are a few places in this country where like a, a school district has uh, their schools broken up to cover such a large group of and, and di diverse amount of people. And like at South Carroll, like you really get people from all walks of life. So I wasn't really too shocked when I was hearing, I mean, obviously experiences are different based on geographic location, but like, I don't know. I mean, South Carroll does have its like own little mini America in that own little, in that little corridor of Carroll County. But my business does a lot of um, news and media. We, we've covered um, tons of events. I've we've interviewed people. We've been shared by as far right as far left as you can imagine. We've been cited by CNN, cited by Breitbart. We've been shared by Andrew Yang, shared by Glenn Beck. So we, we really cover that spectrum and hope to be like a nonpartisan entity and and restore objectivity to media, but also provide alternative opinion in our editorials. Well, that's great. Good luck with that. Thank you. I appreciate it. That's awesome. Now I'm going to ask you a few more questions about life in Mount Airy. Sure. And real quickly, I want to say 71republic.com if you want to go check it out. It's just the number 71 in Republic. That's very industrious. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so let's see. Some of these. Tell us about the places that you and your friends like to eat here in town. Like to eat. See, that's now, this is the good part of the interview because I, I know everything about that. Um, so my friends and I, we like wings. Like wings, like wings are it, man. Like we will go, like I think I hung out with my friends like a couple weeks ago and we had like 110 wings for the whole group of us, like all seven of us. We like wings. <laughs> and so um, Green Turtle is a really good place to go. It has everything right. You have, and I personally recommend if you ever go to Green Turtle, Buffalo Chicken Pizza. Buffalo Chicken Pizza is so good. I'm, I'm getting on a tangent. See, like I like food so much. Um, but wings are fantastic. They have like special deal nights, I think, for wings at Green Turtle within Mount Airy. I've gotten breakfast at Old Town. That's like a, you know, that's a fan favorite. Um, Crying Johnny's for hot dogs. I go there every once in a while. That's really good. California Tortilla, also a very popular location as well. So is Chick-fil-A. Not Chick-fil-A, sorry, Chipotle. We I wish mean, we had a Chick-fil-A. I wish, yeah, I know. <laughs> Chick-fil-A and Eldersburg is where some of us do go. Um, and then another really popular one that I don't think a lot of people know is um, Quick Fire. A lot of people go to Quick Fire. I think your, your daughter probably goes there every once in a while. Like a lot of kids from South Carroll go to Quick Fire. It's right next to, I think, Chipotle. Yeah, and it's just, I never, I, out of all the places, I never thought that would be like really popular, but it just, it is, the Hibachi Grill. So, um, Quick Fire's a, a really big one, too. And uh, one of your classmates, their family owns it. Yes, yes, I know. It's just a small world. And the only, only other place that I usually go um, is in Urbana, and that's the Buffalo Wild Wings there. Because they have 65 cent wing night, and that's just like, she can go crazy. Cool. All right, let's see. To finish our interview, why don't you tell me about some of the fun events that you've attended and like a favorite experience or memorable experience here in town? Sure. So 
Um, my favorite experience is by far the fair. Um, the the either one of the either either one of the two. All, all the kids go to that. I remember riding the rides. I was super scared of the super shot, and I remember going on that, and I felt like I was just like I couldn't. I think I passed out on it. It was crazy, but. Um, that is definitely a, a big fan favorite, um, and, and amongst the kids is going to that fair. Um, I always recommend the um, deep fried Oreos. Those are really, really popular. I always get those. And um, my, my most fondest memory, I think, from the fair is I was I was playing like the little roulette wheel that you can like bet quarters on for like three hours. And I kept losing, but I kept going. I'm from Vegas, so I, I was born there. And so I have a little bit of gambling passion deep in my heart. So I, that's that's definitely my favorite thing to do at the fair is to play a little roulette wheel and put quarters down on it. Well, thank you, Matt, for taking the time to talk with us. We really appreciate it. And good luck with your business endeavors and at college and your probably see you in politics someday. <laughs> well, we'll see. Thank you so much for uh, having me. I really appreciated the opportunity.